É, Amazing Hacker. Hey, welcome back to the channel, Amazing Hackers. I hope you're all doing well today. So you first of all heard some of your own. If you guys want to be an introduction of one of my videos, feel free to send a video or voice clip to info at the xsrad.com. Now you might be wondering, what is gotten into you, Uncle Red? Are you reacting to Uncle Red? Yes, I am, guys, because sorry, I get so many comments and I really want to answer all of them, but it's impossible to type out an answer. There's just so many questions and I really appreciate it. So please keep sending them in. And I want to hear from you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to, answer, to ask them because I'll gladly answer them in a stream like this. So um, <clears throat> let's get started. First of all, Mystery Hawks reminds me to speak slowly and talk clearly. That's a good, good remark. Thank you very much. If I forget that, please remind me again. Eagle258, thank you, brother. My pleasure. He also asks, Uncle Rat, do you think I should study web development and software engineering to go as deep as possible? I really want to get to an advanced level in bug hunting, really advanced. Well, then my answer is going to be yes, absolutely. It's going to help you tremendously to learn those things. But it's also important to think about what you, you want to do, because let's talk a little bit about future. There are things coming up like Internet of Things, uh, like um, like mobile applications, like um, there's this AWS application, things that you can pen test. So there's a many different aspects that you can go into. But before you can hack something properly, you need to know how it works first. Because let's define the, the, some of the properties of a hacker, shall we? For me, a hacker um, is somebody who's curious. They always want to see more and more and more. That's a very important property. And also the fact that a hacker is very, um, he always wants to use things in an unintended way. Like for example, if you want to do cross-site scripting, you want to use that input field in a way that it was never intended to be used. That input field was used to uh, intend to have a name in it, not a cross-site scripting attack factor. So that's something like you will have to keep learning you will have to understand deeply what you're trying to learn and if you want to get really advanced you're going to have to know what you're doing before you can know how you can abuse that so thank you very much for that question on the next one mr technical review asks i want to learn bug bounty from you please well why not check out one of my many free courses that i have available from me uh, on Udemy, my friend. You can find me under my name, Wesley, um, or you can also look at the description below. And there's also Podia courses available as well, of course. And it's not that I don't want to teach you personally, I really do, but I would have to split myself into 13,000 people to teach each and every single one of you individually. So that's why I made these courses. And I also recommend for you to look onto my YouTube channel because as we'll see in a minute, I also have a giant cross-site scripting course on YouTube for free. So thank you very much for asking that question, brother. I'm going to give you guys a like and a heart whenever I answered your question. And that way we can see that we can get to all of them. So let's see here. We are up to here. Um, my friend Stamillion says, WSM brother, nice video and information. Thank you very much, my friend. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate it whenever you guys leave me comments like that because it really motivates me to keep on going and pushing harder every day. Mr. Zeus Cybersec, if you guys haven't checked out his channel yet, I would highly recommend that he also makes cybersecurity related videos. Um, and definitely go check him out, guys. Highly recommend him. Um, he said, well said, people should enjoy learning rather than competing and comparing with others. We all start somewhere. I could not agree more. One of the points that I always try to bring across is that we all have our own background and we never have to chase the same chances. That's why it's never fruitful to compare yourself to other people, but you should always aim to compare yourself to who you were yesterday. That's something that I definitely would stand behind. So thank you very much for bringing that to my attention, Mr. Cybersec. And he also asked, by the way, how are you doing, brother? Well. <clears throat> 
you guys might hear from my voice that I'm still a little bit sick. Now, don't worry babies, it's not the Rona, so that's not it, but I'm still a bit sick. I had some throw ups last evening, but first the baby got sick, then the mom got sick, and of course daddy has to follow. So that's me, uh, I'm doing good, I hope you're doing good as well. Leave me a comment about how you're doing, I want to talk to you as well, but I wish, I'd, like, I, I can show you guys, I have like 300 Discord messages that I still have to go through. So, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I will get to you soon, I promise. Mr. Cory Resilient, he asks, say I'm using XSS Hunter and I have a WordPress plugin that's vulnerable to stored or reflected cross-site scripting. And I can post one of the XSS Hunter payloads in the comment section or review section of the website where the admin may check and read my post. If I just put the script, will it, sorry, let me enlarge this while I'm at it. You guys have asked me to do that, so I'll try to be very, uh, very mindful of that. If I just put the script, will it just look like a sketchy script with no text? Or can I put some text like click URL, then the script, uh, uh, then the script, and they can click on it? So basically, two-folded question here, really good question. He asks, what am I testing here? That's important to know because we are testing blind cross-site scripting. We are entering our attack factor, but we cannot uh, check for ourselves if it's triggering. So that means we can only do a few things. Let's say we can make a callback to our own server. If we see in the access logs that we have a hit, then we know that that cross-site scripting might have been executed. Now, the script tag that you're referring to, that's an HTML tag. So if you go and look up HTML text, hypertext markup language, so um, it's going to be a series of tags displaying how a document should be constructed. Those tags, that script tag is not even going to show up on the administrator's screen. He's not even going to see it. So you can hide it between a perfectly legitimate post. Um, if you want to have a URL that says click me, then you're going to have interaction full because what I was talking about was interaction less. And that's what the XSS Hunter payloads are as well. They're just a JavaScript that fires automatically. Don't have to have the end user click on it in any way, shape or form. So that's a, a major difference to realize. Uh, and something I also wanted to give you guys, and it's been brought to my attention multiple times. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, it's these third party tools. You shouldn't uh, rely on them. You should always check if they are even allowed in your program. Because if you're hunting a target, they don't want to see their hunting, their data go onto a third party server for potential vulnerabilities even on a third party server that they don't control, that they don't have an NDA with. So that's something that they don't like and it can even prevent you from getting a bounty. So be extremely careful if you, you do if you do use one of these tools that you have your own out of band server set up for it. Now, I don't understand this, but thank you very much. I love that emoticon is really cool. Um, let's see here. Thanks, my pleasure. I really enjoy making these videos. Second, well, I was first. I was the one posting it, so I was first. <laughs> Just kidding. I love you guys. So, um, another question. You should do a video on top 10 ways black hat hackers make money and then white hat. Two different videos. I think you will get a lot of views. Well, um, I'm going to... I'm going to maybe sound a unpopular opinion on this, but black hats, white hats, they don't really exist in my opinion. We are all hackers and we all draw the line where we would put ourselves. Um, so if we have to draw borders, if we have to draw lines, it would be as far as we were willing to go ourselves. That's something that you have to keep in mind. Not going to say much more about that. Uh, the second part I want to say is I didn't even know 10 ways to make money with hacking, my friend. I've made, I've mentioned five and that was about all of the inspiration I have. And that's about as soon as I find some more, I will definitely mention them to you guys. But that's about what I do as well. I write my medium articles. 
I have my YouTube channel, I sell courses, I sell trainings, um, mostly to companies, I sell pen testing, so there's many different ways to make money, of course, with hacking, but you have to be a little bit crafty. Let me take a sip of my Ilya Espresso there. Ah, that's always good. So please make a video of blind XSS with XSS Hunter. That's a good question as well. I've been meaning to do that. Now the only thing is that I'm going to include how to set up your own out of band server as well. So look forward to that in the coming days or weeks. Uh, hello, my friend. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. My pleasure, amazing hacker. That's always good to hear from you guys. If you guys put a thank you in the comments i really really appreciate that it, i might not be able to respond to every single one but guys it warms my heart and keeps giving me motivation to keep pushing myself on and on um so thank you very much for always being there for me and always pushing me to give the best of myself i've seen this work before if somebody knows what this is i would highly appreciate it if you tell me um i think it's something like love or something like that no idea so um ram kanwar says there's no word in hindi for hacker that's right when i when i studied it um i think it was adbut amazing hacker or something like that i'm sorry if i butchered it but it's something like that um along those lines Anthony McQueen says, well, what I learned in a year doing hacking is that it's not easy. And that is completely correct. Because when you're hacking, you're already at the top of your game. You're doing some IT stuff. You're doing stuff that other people would never do. So you're already going farther than most people will ever come in their lives. And then you're putting something on top of that by doing things like bug bounties. Well, that's a, that's a heads off because you shouldn't blame yourself if you cannot easily find vulnerabilities in cross-site scripting. It's like Anthony says here as well. Well, what I learned in a year doing hacking is that it's not easy. You see countless videos out there, everyone flexing their bounties. And that is correct. But what you don't see is when somebody says $20,000 bounty, it might be 100 hours, 150, 200, 300 400 hours of training behind there and that's what made the difference in my opinion now of course it's hard to train in certain things like business logic vulnerabilities i can't easily train you how to find a business logic vulnerability you need logic skills um, i cannot easily teach you how to find any of these bugs because we're talking about bug bounties all of these things have been tested before by a pen tester of course that's a whole big difference um, at first my friend was all over the place here, he did not know what to focus on, automation is not as it seems, tools can only take you so far. And that's extremely correct, because the hammer doesn't forge the sword, it's the blacksmith that does it. And that's something that's really important to understand, you are the blacksmith in the story. You are not the hammer, you're wielding the hammer, and that's why I always recommend people to try it manually first, to just try hammering that sword and see where they fail and then if they fine-tune that approach then they might get a bench press which is like these giant pneumatic presses to help forge their swords more easily but first of all try and do it the easy way another really fun story i have about that by the way is when i was younger i had a bow and arrow and i was shooting bow and arrow and every time I try a new sport, I get bored with very fast. So what my mom has rightfully told me is that if I want to try something, I should try the cheapest version first. And then if I enjoy it, I can still upgrade. But I know myself, most of the time I won't be doing it. Anthony says he learned that he needs a mix of automation and manual hunting to be effective. And also there's no magic here. It's all hard work and putting in the time. That's very correct, because when I first started out and when I first made so much bounties, I was hunting for easily 10 hours every single day. I loved hunting. I got up and the first thing that was on my mind was my target. So yeah, definitely can understand that sometimes it's really hard to be able to find the time. And that's why it's important to be able to take notes properly, because if you jump out of a situation and jump into it again, you don't want to spend 15 to 20 minutes setting back up again. So thank you very much. You always bring very insightful comments to the conversation and I really appreciate your presence, my friend. Thanks a lot, brothers. Good work.
Let's see, that 100 days of hacking, that's a good initiative that I definitely support. Um, there was one question here that was still wanted to answer, and here we go. What's my approach to collect target URLs for Nox? How do I get a parameters? Well, basically any my normal strategy that I apply for looking for parameters. I will only look in the back end for parameters. I will not look in the front end that much. Uh, in Burp Suite, there is the option and the responses to uh, unhide hidden fields. So I put on that. There's way back URLs, which I will use to specifically grab parameters from. Um, there is the JavaScript file itself that might contain parameters. So there's many different things which I will try, but it's mostly a combination of all of them. So um, I hope that answered your question, my friend. If not, please let me know in the comments below. Then the secret letters of a hacker is freaking amazing as well, guys. If you're not following him, you are missing out. He makes videos about bug bounties, about ethical hacking. And he has some of the best content that I've seen in a while, together with some of my heroes, Life Overflow, Stuck Insider PhD. You guys are freaking all awesome. And there's so many more I want to name, but I have to complete this video. Um, Kraken is saying, Kraken, sorry. Italy won the championship cup. Yes, very, they did. And I really enjoyed that because over here where I live, a lot of Italian people live and they like to light up fireworks if they win one of these things, which I really appreciate because I love fireworks. If you guys know me a little bit, you will know that I have a huge collection of fireworks every single time it's time to light off. And if you do, shout out to you, you the real geo. Thank you so much. So this one I will have to look up because I have no idea what was going on here anymore. Uh, thank you very much, my friend, for that red symbol. Anything you guys throw in the comments below. Thank you so much. You, I, you just don't know how much I appreciate all of these comments, all of these nice words, all of these tweets, all of these emails. Just throw them at me and I love seeing them. Now, I had to close my DMs, of course, because as you saw, I have 300 messages that I still need to answer. But there's going to be free courses in the description below, as well as a link to my Bug Bounty course and a link to my Bug Bounty Bootcamp. Now, if you guys want the Bug Bounty course, then you should just make a donation to this enormously good foundation because I have a campaign running as well. And we're currently at $773, I think. So just under $300 to go. If we make it, everybody gets a Red Pack Bootcamp. If we don't make it all the same, everybody who donates, even if it's just a dollar, you will get a Bug Bounty course from me. If you guys donate, do it through the link in the description below, because then I'll get notified and I can more easily send you the Bug Bounty course, of course. So thank you very much for in for watching this video. By the way, I don't get any kickbacks from this. This is purely a charitable cause that I really support. So as a dad, of course. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for being here, amazing hacker. This is the second time I recorded it because the first time I didn't have any audio. So let's hope I'm even recording. If I am, you'll see me on YouTube. Bye, amazing hackers. Much 